Hey, this is Gary Gomez. I'm a real estate and architectural photographer based in Atlanta, Georgia. And today I'm going to show you how to create natural looking fires where there aren't any in Photoshop using the render flames tool. So let's take a quick look at how we made this shot here. So to start with, this is the final delivered photo for my real estate agent from a shoot I did yesterday. Um, but here's the original ambient photo and here's the flash frame. Just a single speed light bounced above the ceiling and conveniently you can see in the mirror right over here, the reflection of the flash. So just one speed light, that's it. Really quick and easy to shoot this. Um, and that's part of my real estate photography workflow that I teach in Mastering Real Estate Photography, my five hour tutorial. Um, so we'll just quickly blend these together. I'll send it into Photoshop and do a quick blend. Wait for that to load. And I just have an action that does it really quick. So we will quickly blast through this edit. Get rid of that nasty reflection in the mirror. Okay, so that's pretty much all I do for any photo I make for a real estate listing. Um, so now let's get busy adding the flame. Uh, so we'll just add a new layer and the first step to doing this is you got to tell Photoshop where you want the flame to be located. So we'll just zoom into the fireplace a little bit and I'll use the pen tool for this. Um, it's the P key on the keyboard and the best results you're going to get is to do this in several passes. Uh, so for a fireplace like this, I might do this three or four separate times, but in the interest of making this quick and easy to digest on YouTube, I'll just do it once. The idea is you draw a path with the pen tool on where you want the flame to be. And the more of these that you make in smaller chunks, the more realistic it's going to look. But I'll just draw one sort of jagged one following the, uh, you know, the lines of these logs that are in the fireplace. And we'll just see how we do by making one large flame instead of um, several smaller ones that look different and unique. So that's the path, that's where the flames are going to be. And then we'll go to the filter tab and go to render flame. And this little dialog pops up. We'll just slide this all the way left and you see we get this tiny flame. This is adjusting the length or in our case, the height of the flame. And um, that looks like it might work okay. And then the width of the flame, um, they can be really narrow. So this would be good for like candlelight um, and really wide. I don't know what that would be for, um, but we'll just kind of come in somewhere in here and see how we do. That looks okay. The angle changes the angle of it. We don't need to adjust that because the flames are going straight up. Um, so zero is where we want that. And then the interval uh, just sort of changes how the separate flames that are being rendered are kind of interacting with each other, I guess. You just get a very different looking fire when you slide this around. So that looks good. Um, and then you can click on this advanced tab and make some additional changes to the characters of the flames. Uh, so turbulent would be if it's windy or something like that. Um, you can adjust how the flames are behaving, so to speak. Um, here I find keeping it fairly low looks a little more natural for a fireplace. And I pretty much leave everything else exactly how it is. So I'll just hit OK and there's our fire. Um, I probably went a little over, overboard on the length there, but that's okay. We'll hit escape to get rid of my pen tool lines. And then this is on its own layer because we created a new layer before we started this. So what that means is we can use the transform tool just to move it around and stretch it to be a different size if we need to. And I will in this case, we'll make it a little smaller and we can position it directly over the logs, something like that. Probably looks all right. We'll squish it down just a little more. If if you don't know how to use this in the transform tool, if you just drag it up and down, the whole thing scales in the same aspect ratio. But if you hold the shift key down while you drag it, it'll let you manipulate the shape uh, while you're doing a free transform. So I think that looks decent right there. So we'll hit enter and we'll zoom out and take a look at it. All right, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna add a layer mask with the layer mask icon down down here and with our brush tool using a black brush painting on the white mask we're just going to paint out the hard edges where they don't look very natural which is mostly going to be along the bottom 
give them a little more natural look. And you can see, because I did this all in one pass, um, it's not going to be perfect. If you did this, you know, two or three separate times in smaller chunks, you'd be able to put a little separation between some of the taller flames and the shorter ones and make it look a little more natural. And that is what you should do if you have the time to do it. Um, so that looks pretty good. And then we can reduce the opacity to sell it just a little bit more and make it look a little more natural. So to add that warm glow, what we're going to do is just make a little selection. I like to use the pen tool for this. And we'll just select the hearth of the fireplace going around the edges. Just like that. Command enter makes that selection. And then we'll add a color, a solid color layer. And that looks good. And now we change the blend mode. Um, I have found a few to work fairly well, but you can scroll through them and get a preview. Um, I tend to think that screen can look good at a very low opacity depending on the application. And uh, even overlay looks great sometimes too. It depends on the application. It's good to try them all and see which one looks the most natural. So here we are at around 18%. Turn it off and on. And now we've got a bit of a warm glow inside the fireplace. Go up just a little bit more on that, I think. And then if you click on the layer mask and get a black brush, uh, what we don't want to do is make the flames more orange than they already are. So I'm just going to paint away that overlaid color off of the logs. And anywhere inside the fireplace where you think it might be a little heavy handed, you can also remove some of it. And I think that's probably good enough. I think I'll get rid of it down here too. I don't need it so much down there. And that's what our mask looks like. All right. And that is pretty much the finished fireplace as far as I'm concerned. So the next thing I like to do to add the reflection is um, I do command option shift E to stamp visible and to a new layer and that just takes all of the layers below it and combines it into one new layer above okay and then again with a pen tool I'm going to make a selection of the hearth command enter to make the selection command J or control J on a PC to copy that to a new layer. And then we can actually take this stamp visible layer and get rid of it. We don't really need it. No harm in leaving it there though. Just adds to the file size a little bit. So now we have an exact copy of the fireplace. And if we go to Commander Control T to transform, right click and flip vertical, turns it upside down. And then we just slide it down below. And what we want to do is put it where the reflection would naturally be if it was a real reflection, which is right about there, give or take, and we can move it after the fact to make it perfect, but this is a good starting point. And then you can just go through the blend modes, and I think I liked the lighter color a little bit better. Next thing we'll do is we'll add a blur to it, go back to the filter tab, and then blur, Gaussian blur, and this will just add a natural blurred look to the flame. I played with it before and it looks to me that around a radius of 12 looks fairly natural. So we'll apply that and then we can just reduce the opacity from there until it looks natural. And I think I will also um, move it up just a little bit or maybe I'll squish it down a little bit. That looks pretty good and play with the opacity a little bit more. So we started with the flame, then we added the warm glow, and then we made a copy of that and flipped it upside down. We added a blur, and then we changed the blend mode to um, lighter color, and then we reduced the opacity to around 35%. And we can group all three of those together by doing Command or Control G, and see all of our work start to finish. And I usually find that if I turn it on and off a few times, I can see um, if I like the overall look or if it feels natural, or if I need to go back and tone something down. But I think this looks okay for now. Um, 
So we'll just save that and go back into Photoshop. I'm sorry, go back into Lightroom. And I'll just put my finishing touches preset on it. And this one's a little bright, so I'll bring that down just a little bit. Make sure I have good contrast with my blacks and whites. And straighten out the one point perspective. That looks pretty good. So that's the final delivered photo. But there you go. That's how to use render flames in Photoshop. I do not cover this in my tutorial. This is just something extra for YouTube. I thought it would be fun to do after my client asked me to do this yesterday. I hope you found it beneficial. And if you want to see my entire real estate photography workflow start to finish, you can check out my tutorial at masteringrealestatephotography.com. Thanks guys. See you next time.